It's the year 2000. Computers that you can hold in your pocket have become a reality. But styluses? Pfft, those are so last millennium. At least, that was the thought of Microsoft employees Wei Dong Huang and company the day they published their paper on a little experimental device they like to call the MyPad. But what is a MyPad? Well, besides sounding like the Simpsons parody of the iPad, MyPad, which stood for Multimodal Interactive Notepad, was a Microsoft PDA prototype based on an iPad Pocket PC similar to the one I covered earlier this month. Started in 1998, the main idea behind the MyPad project was to incorporate a speech recognition interface on a PDA, as opposed to styluses or tiny keyboards. Now it's worth noting that at this time, speech recognition wasn't nearly as good as it is today. Years before, it was limited to just a few commands in certain contexts. Casper word underline. Casper 72 point italic outline. And years later, dictation on a desktop computer would still result in plenty of mistakes being made from ambient noise. Delete, select all. <laughs> the MyPad project was attempting to do all of this, better, on weaker PDA hardware through an internal microphone with telephone quality distortion. All it took was a little cheating. See, the first misleading point I made there was that the MyPad itself did none of the speech recognition work. Since the onboard processor was far too weak, it would actually wirelessly transmit the audio to a Windows 2000 server for the actual speech recognition over LAN, with the suggestion that future models might even use mobile data. The noisy microphone was resolved by training the speech recognition engine used by the MyPad with samples of the microphone input, allowing it to adapt to the noise and significantly reduce the error rate. But the biggest hurdle, speech recognition for a vocabulary of thousands of words, was overcome by a little technology called Tap and Talk. Tap and Talk was not only the key feature of the MyPad, but it was what allowed the device to work effectively at all. Essentially, it combined the best parts of both stylus and speech interfaces. To use speech recognition, the user would hold down the stylus on a field, which would give the speech recognition engine the context necessary to make a more accurate interpretation of the word spoken. For example, if you were filling out the to field in an email, it would know that you were saying a name, limiting the number of potentially incorrect results. Corrections could also easily be made by holding the stylus over a word and repeating it. The MyPad was also intended to be able to parse natural language requests. So, instead of opening the calendar and filling in each field one by one, the user could just tell the device all the details of an appointment and it would know what fields went where. Schedule a meeting with Bill Gates for Monday night at 7 p.m. Bill Gates, one hour, Monday night, 7 p.m. As time went on, the MyPad was looking more and more favorable, with improving accuracy, greater capabilities, and testing that showed the technology significantly reduced the time required to complete a task. So what happened to MyPad? The last publication about it in 2002 mentions it being productized by the Speech Products Group, but I certainly don't remember anything close to the MyPad coming out of Microsoft. Well, except for one little thing. A little over a year since the last MyPad update, Microsoft put out a little program for the Pocket PC called Voice Command, a little program that I've managed to get my hands on. Originally priced at $40, Voice Command is pretty much what it says, Voice Commands. Unlike the MyPad, Voice Command runs entirely on Pocket PC hardware, without any outside help from a server. As a consequence though, the speech recognizer is far more limited. There's no tap and talk, no natural language command parsing, in fact, there's no dictation capabilities, period. Voice command is entirely set up on hierarchies and limited list of potential responses to ensure accuracy. At any time, there are only a few valid things you can say to the device, usually listed to you by a text-to-speech voice. Choose a help topic, contacts, media, calendar, start menu, or general. Voice command is activated any time you push a designated command button in your pocket PC. A little microphone appears at the top of the screen to show that the device is listening, and you can say your command. One of the simplest commands is the start command. Basically any program on your iPad can now be opened with just the power of your voice, reducing the number of stylus taps required to play solitaire by 4. Start solitaire. Voice command also includes some basic functionality with contacts on the device. 
Well, you can't make natural language requests to do things like start an email with someone, like you could do on the MyPad. It does allow for looking up contacts by name, and on Windows Mobile cell phones, the ability to start a phone call with them, as well as digit dialing. Show Bonzi Buddy. Calendar functionality in voice command is probably the weakest, coming off as more gimmicky compared to the other capabilities. Every command is basically a variation of the same query to have upcoming appointments read off by the text-to-speech voice, with no included ability to add or modify appointments. What's my next appointment? Tomorrow at 6 p.m. Upload the video, dummy. Really, this one seems pretty pointless to me, since it takes longer to say the command and have the voice read off what you want than it takes to look at the home screen or just push the calendar button and read off the event yourself. The only other added functionality is that the voice can read off reminders after the notification sound, just in case you needed that. Do a face reveal, starting now. Probably my favorite area for voice commands on the iPad, though, is with its media capabilities. Before even getting into the actual voice integration, voice command comes with a few little goodies for Windows Media Player. Probably the most notable is a new skin, with larger buttons making it easier to use on the smaller screen. I still prefer the original skin though, simply for that Windows XP aesthetic. The program also drops in two sample music tracks. Man, I could listen to those all day. Really though, the voice commands for media are pretty handy. Saying, play music, has the device guide you through the selection. What do you want to play? Album, artist, genre, or everything? Artist. Which artist? Elton John, Fleetwood Mac. That one. Fleetwood Mac. But if you know what you want to play, you can tell the device to play a certain album, artist, or genre. Plus, you have the play, pause, next, previous, and stop commands all integrated as well. You can even ask it to tell you the name of the currently playing track. What song is this? I'm just sitting here by the Beatles. Enjoy the copyright strike. I think the main reason I like the media voice commands and none of the others is because it's the only use case I can see for the iPad where going hands-free might be helpful. It saves having to scroll through a potentially long list of songs, and it's a task where you're not already dedicating much attention to the device as it is. Pretty much every other command performs pretty shallow functionality and takes as much time, if not more, to use than its touchscreen alternative. And that's pretty much all there is to say for Microsoft Voice Command. The product itself is fairly weak, and even considering the time of its release, it just feels way too limited to really be much more than a gimmick. The concept it was based on, however, the MyPad, was actually pretty cool. In fact, one could say with the ubiquity of voice-enabled mobile assistants on nearly all smartphones today, from Siri to Google Assistant to Cortana, the MyPad was ahead of its time. And ahead of its time is pretty much the theme here with Pocket PC Month. Looking back, it's surprising to find pocket-sized devices like the iPad that incorporated features like web browsing, apps, digital cameras, GPS, and even voice-based assistants. All features we commonly associate with smartphones nowadays as far back as 15 years ago. Granted they came with varying levels of effectiveness and not nearly as much polish as modern devices, but they still show that the vision of the smartphone as we see it today is a bit older than one might normally think.